Do you have a girl or something? No, I'm just, just doing my own thing. Hi, this is the Professional Amateur Hour coming to you all the way from back here. I don't know, someone said it would look better if I was farther away from the camera, so I'll give that a try. They also said, you know, don't show your teeth, but that's not going to happen. So we'll see you know, how this all kind of turns out. Anyways, I did watch a movie this week and it was Best Friends Volume 1. And the R in Friends is in parentheses or brackets for some reason. And this 2017 movie was directed by Justin McGregor and stars Tommy Wiseau, Greg Sestero, and Christine Stephenson Pino, among others, of course. So you're probably wondering, what is the story for this movie? Well, it's about this homeless man and he kind of befriends this strange guy being Tommy Wiseau and he owns a private morgue business and so he's always just getting these dead bodies and you know making them presentable for a funeral but it turns out that he's been like saving the gold teeth from these bodies for like you know 20 or 30 years so he just has like boxes and boxes of gold in his garage and so the homeless man gets you know an idea to steal some and sell some and then he wants to sell the rest of it and tries to bring in you know Tommy Wiseau's character and create a kind of little gold side business and so what will happen? Well, for that, you got to watch the movie and find out. All right, so let's discuss this movie. Well, with this movie, I got to tell you right up front, it is one of these movies where it, it's kind of imitating the room. After all, it does have Tommy Wiseau and Greg Sestero in this one. And I got to say, it fulfills kind of that promise that the room kind of gives you, or at least, you know, is making to you. It's not directed by Tommy Wiseau, and that's kind of, what kept me away from this movie for so long. I think it might be written by Greg, but don't quote me on that one. I think I saw that on IMDb. And so I don't know, I just kind of didn't have an urge to watch this one. And even though like I love The Room, like that is one of my you know top movies. Of course, my top movie is Rocky Horror Picture Show number one, but The Room certainly in the top five, maybe even in the top three. And so with this one, it is very much like The Room, I have to say. It really is trying to be like a spiritual successor to The Room more than anything else. And I think it like really kind of does that in the end. There's just so many things in this that are just kind of like Room-esque or Room-adjacent. And it's just like amazing just to kind of watch it for a first time and just kind of see all of these things that like you know from The Room and you love from The Room. And just kind of see how they're implemented in this one at like a different kind of flavor, a different kind of context. It's really kind of fascinating. And so, you know, just for an example, in the room that you know, often throw a football when they're just having a conversation, well, they'll never believe it. But this one, they also throw a ball and it's just a basketball and they're just like, not even like doing like a basketball pass with two hands. They're throwing it with just one hand like they would a football. And it's just so like funny since you know having the context of the room and of course you know Tommy Wiseau is there as well so like it's just hilarious that way and then Tommy Wiseau himself just kind of seems like the way he like says his lines and then like other things like it kind of seems like someone's just trying to like get their line out but someone else is like kind of talking over them just like some aspects of the room and so it's just like I gotta say really kind of like a spiritual successor that to the room that I think if you like the room, you will certainly enjoy this one. And another thing that makes this one hilarious for me is, you know, the actual script itself. Some of these lines are just like out of this world. Like I couldn't believe it when I heard it. Some of them I'll probably like remember for a long time. And it's just so ridiculous that I like had to write them down and like for you guys so you can see what it is. So here's this like one ridiculous line. Mind, body, spirit, I give you face of Jesus, King of man. And hey, why not have another? Here's one more. Oh, John. John. No, John's my real name. John! <laughs> it's an ordinary name. Pretty nice. Pretty nice. And so that's just two, but I would say there's probably like... 10 ridiculous lines in this one that I was like, man, that's, that's something else there. And so it is a kind of a unique movie that way where it is very much something you can't predict. It's certainly unpredictable as well. 
Let's see, what else can I say? I think with Tommy Wiseau, he has like these strange boots on or shoes on the whole time. They're like huge platforms or something, but just makes him so awkward when he walks. It's just, you know, adds a kind of little bit of quirkiness to it all that I certainly, you know, enjoyed as well. And that brings me to what doesn't work with this film. Well, if you know The Room, The Room's not a good movie by anyone's standard. In fact, I've heard it described as like the best worst movie ever made. And this one is, you know, following in the footsteps of that, right? So it's trying to be bad. I think kind of with like, you know, perspective of, you know, having seen The Room, it's very clear that that's, you know, a huge influence on this one. And because of that, there certainly is, you know, a ceiling for, you know, how good this one can actually be. It certainly kind of reaches that ceiling and does, you know, the best job it can. But it's not like a good movie compared to mainstream movies. Like, it's just kind of so ridiculous. And that's why, you know, I love it, certainly. And there's probably lots of different things that are kind of, you know, lifted out of the room that make it for, you know, a not a very good movie, but a good bad movie. Other than that, with this one, the ending is a cliffhanger and it like actually takes place on a cliff. The final scene is on a cliff. So of course, you know, there's a cliffhanger and I was just kind of disappointed with that. I would have loved to have at least a, like a little bit of a wrap up of anything really. But the way that it's left to the viewers is an absolute, you know, cliffhanger. Like there's no way you can possibly imagine what's going to happen next. So I'll have to watch, you know, volume two. I haven't actually watched it yet. I wanted to do this review before that. And, you know, hopefully I will be able to watch it next week unless, you know, Leo sends me a screener or something. But, you know, we'll see how that goes. And so, yeah, just the cliffhanger ending. I would have liked to at least have a little bit of a wrap up, you know? As for a recommendation, well, certainly take this with a grain of salt because I haven't seen Volume 2 yet. And I would say with Volume 1, I would say it's worth a watch, especially if you love The Room and other bad movies of the same kind of ilk. It is, like I said before, like kind of a spiritual successor of The Room, or at least that's what it's going for. And it feels like it for sure. And so, yeah, press play on this one if you want. I did see it was on Tubi, but you have to have like the, the parentheses in the name or else you won't kind of find it. And so, yeah, watch it if you can. As for rating, well, I got to give it the good, bad score of 4.5, of course. And with that being said, I think that's all I wanted to say. So like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.